When we got into neuroanatomy, remember that I said that there were three long pathways that were going to enable us to get from the uh, sacral end of the spinal cord all the way up to the brain. But that once we reached the brain, once we reached the thalamus, they became not, non, particu not particularly useful in, uh, in diagnosing a, w the location of a lesion. We now need a pathway that takes us across the cerebrum. And that pathway are, is, is the visual pathway. So the visual pathway uh, illustrated here is coming from the eyes through the optic nerve, uh, either crosses or does not cross in the optic chiasm, travels through the optic tract to the lateral geniculate, and from the lateral geniculate reaches the visual cortex. And there's a hiccup in how it travels from the lateral geniculate to the visual cortex. Let's start by understanding that what's represented in the visual cortex, reminding ourselves that what's represented in the visual cortex is not the eye, but the visual field. So the right visual cortex represents the left visual world. Everything that's on the left in coming from both the right eye and the left eye. And the way that works is if you look at the two retinas, if we can zoom in here, if you look at the two retinas, this retina, the temporal retina, is receiving information from the, uh, the contralateral visual field, the contralateral visual field, whereas the nasal retina is receiving input from the ipsilateral visual field. Okay? There's a, there's a cross in the, through the pupil. Information is coming in. And so the temporal retina, which receives contralateral visual field information, is already on the side of the cortex to which it has to end up, where it has to end up. So it doesn't have to cross. It does not cross an optic chiasm. So it goes directly to the lateral geniculate. On the other hand, this nasal retina, which gets ipsilateral visual field information, has to get to the other side, and it gets to the other side through the optic chiasm. So the, the, uh, the information in the uh, optic chiasm is coming from the two nasal retinas, one of them uh, representing the left visual field, one of them representing the right visual field. And they're going across to reach the correct side of the um, of, of the cerebral hemisphere. Any lesion rostral to the chiasm will simply blind a whole eye or impair vision in one eye, but it will not be selective for a visual field. Any, on the other hand, any lesion behind the chiasm, what we would call a retrochiasmal lesion, is going to result in a, what's called a homonymous anopia. In other words, if we lesion here, it'll affect both eyes in the same way. That's homonymous. It's affecting both eyes in the same way. So a lesion here is going to affect the contralateral visual field of the ipsilateral eye and the contralateral visual field of the uh, contralateral eye, okay? So behind the chiasm, we're only talking visual field. In front of the chiasm, we're talking eyes. Now at the chiasm, it's a very particular uh, problem. What happens at the chiasm is that these, the two contralateral uh, visual fields of the two eyes um, are, are, um, are uh, lesioned. And so what you get is a loss of the right visual field in the right eye and the left visual field in the left eye. I think I just said that wrong. So it's the, it's the ipsilateral visual field of the eye. So the right visual field of the right eye, the left visual field of the left eye are both lesioned. That means that you've lost your peripheral vision, and that is indeed what happens with a space-occupying pituitary tumor, a pituitary adenoma. The pituitary adenoma it sits in the cella turcica, it grows, it grows, it can't go down, it can't go to the side, it can't go to the front, it can only push up into the brain. And the first thing that it encounters is the optic chiasm. And as a result, 
what people get is what's called a bitemporal hemianopia. And this is the only place that you can get a bitemporal hemianopia. And one has to be extremely aware of this because this is going to be the first sign that there is a pituitary adenoma. Okay. So now we're, we're going to look at lesions that are behind the, the chiasm, the retrochiasmal lesions. Lesions in the optic tract, or more rarely in the lateral geniculate, are going to produce a contralateral hemianopia. In other words, if my right optic tract is lesioned, I will not see the left visual field from either my left eye or my right eye. Okay, it's all about visual field. I know I'm saying this over and over again, but believe me, it, um, if you go home and you try to repeat this, you'll find yourself confused the first few times. So it's really worth uh, me drilling in on this. You, you, have to, you have to remember this. You have to learn this. Okay. Behind the, the uh, lateral geniculate, things are, are a little bit different. What happens is that there is a division of the fibers that are carrying the upper half of the contralateral visual field and the bottom half of the contralateral visual field. So these are quadrant, th these are carrying quadrants of, of information. And if there's a lesion in either, either one of these uh, two pathways, uh, you, what you get instead of a hemianopia is a quadrantinopia. Okay? So, the upper visual field travels in something called Myers loop, which goes all the way in front of the temporal, to the front of the temporal lobe. It takes this detour. I don't know why. I have no idea how this, this evolved, but um, it takes this detour. And so the, the interruption here will give you a contralateral superior quadrantinopia whereas a lesion here will give you a contralateral inferior quadrantinopia. That's illustrated over here. They come together as they approach the uh, calcarine fissure, and they come together into the, on either side of the calcarine fissure, there's an upper bank and there's a lower bank. The upper bank carries the inferior part of the visual field, and the lower bank carries the, uh, the upper part of the visual field. Okay, so let's just take a, a look at this. Uh, the, the anatomy is really spectacular. Uh, this is the optic radiation. So this is the back of the brain. Here's the uh, primary visual cortex here. And you can see this massive tract of white matter. That's the optic radiation. It's really quite remarkable. I was really excited when I first uh, uh, found out that I could uh, dissect that out. Okay, do so you see that here and here? We're going to see another view of it here. I, I'm somewhat in love with this, uh, this anatomy here. Um, here is the optic radiation coming into the visual cortex. Here's the optic radiation on the other side coming into the visual cortex. Okay, here is a view of the calcarine fissure. The upper bank... Uh, Oh, this is reversed. This should be reversed. The upper bank actually has the lower quadrant. The lower bank has the uh, upper quadrant. So these should be reversed. Sorry about that. Um, the other thing to mention here is that just as what we saw in the somatosensory cortex was that there was a lot more uh, space given to the fingertips and the lips. In the visual cortex, a lot more, just as much space is given to the central five degrees of visual field as is given to the rest of the entire, the entirety of the visual field. So there is, uh, what, what do we do? We get most of our information from the center of our visual field. It's called the macula. Um, and, uh, and so that takes up much, much more space in the occipital cortex, in the primary visual cortex. So the, it's, we're not done when we get to primary visual cortex. Primary visual cortex is necessary but not sufficient for um, forming a, a, a visual image. Uh, it, it, what, you, what you see just with your visual cortex uh, is, 
are very simple patterns, such as the auras that you get before a, either a seizure or a migraine. So, for example, in a, a typical migraine aura is a is a black and white repeating pattern uh, going around um, a, 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 in a racetrack type of uh, fashion. Uh, that is the type of uh, processing that takes place in the primary visual cortex. If you ask your primary visual, visual cortex, what are you looking at? It would not know. That takes the uh, ex what's called extra striate cortex processing. So the another name for the primary visual cortex is striate cortex. It has a stripe that was discovered by a medical student, as, as it turns out, uh, Gennari in 1776. And, uh, and so, Strike cortex is primary visual cortex, uh, and and so everything that processes uh, sensory uh, visual information after the primary sensory cortex is called extra striate. And there are two basic streams: a ventral stream and a post and a dorsal stream. The ventral stream goes to infrotemporal cortex down here, and that is involved in trying to figure out what it is that you're seeing. This is this is the problem that Dr. P had that we, we talked about this in, in, the, in the first um, chapter, the Dr. P looked at this object and could tell that there was a green cylinder and there, there were these right red polygons on top of it, uh, but couldn't say what it was until he smelled it, and then he knew it was a rose. So that is called visual agnosia, and it is a deficit somewhere in the ventral stream, okay? And the dorsal stream does a different thing. It actually uh, supports uh, locating uh, objects in space. Uh, how, where are they and how are they moving? And it's, it's uh, I think, commonly understood that it's, it's the critical area uh, that is used by humans for tool use and, and other animals as well. Um, we're, we're certainly not the only animals using tools. Uh, but to, in order to use a tool, you need to know where you are in space, and you need to be able to predict where you're going to be in space, where the object or the object that you're trying to uh, manipulate is going to be. And so there are um, both the use of tools by the self and the, and the recognition of others' use of tools is thought to uh, depend on dorsal visual stream. The ultimate output from the dorsal visual stream is to to make movements using this, this visual information. And that's what we're gonna talk about in, 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 the, uh, in the next video is the sensory motor cortex.